Hi, I'm Joe Dante for Trailers from Hell. In 1960, Gore Vidal's political drama, The Best Man, played for over a year on Broadway and was successfully revived in 2001 and 2012. Melvin Douglas won a Tony for his portrayal of candidate William Russell. His opponent, Joe Cantwell, was Frank Lovejoy, and the wily ex-president, whose endorsement they both yearned for, was played by Lee Tracy. When producer Lawrence Terman decided to turn it into a movie in 1964, he made a wise move. He hired Vidal to write the screenplay and asked Tracy to repeat his role, which won him an Oscar nomination for his final film. Of course, it was intended as a meditation on the upcoming Kennedy-Nixon contest, but it's so prescient and smartly written that it still resonates today. Director Franklin Schaffner and DP Haskell Wexler shot almost all of it at LA's late lamented Ambassador Hotel, and the ambience seems totally authentic. It's often compared to advice and consent at the overstuffed all-star political melodrama by Otto Preminger, but for my money, the best man is, well, the best. So I've read the paperback release of the original play, and I'm happy to report that Vidal actually improved on it uh, in the movie. His dialogue is, as ever, witty and passionate. Tell me these two exchanges between the candidates aren't relevant to the current situation. You have no sense of responsibility toward anybody or anything. And that is a tragedy in a man, and it is a disaster in a president. This is Senator Joe Cantwell, candidate for president of the United States. Is he the best man? You don't understand politics. You don't understand this country. This is Art Hochstetter. Everybody's good in this, but Lee Tracy steals the show as the fatally ill ex-president. Power is not a toy that we give to good children. It's a weapon. And the strong man takes it and he uses it. To get here, some men will stop at nothing. He was a 1930s leading man in wise-cracking reporter mode until a scandal involving alcohol and micturation, you could look that up, stymied his career. But he's terrific in his valedictory performance. This is to him what Targets was to Karloff. Fonda and Cliff Robertson play characters modeled on Adlai Stevenson, Vidal it detested the Kennedys, and Joe McCarthy with a bit of Nixon thrown in. So at the political convention of an unnamed party, the two major candidates vying for the nomination are liberal Fonda and conservative Robertson, and both have closeted skeletons. Intellectual womanizer Fonda once had a nervous breakdown, and America first opportunist Robertson had a sexual indiscretion of his own. By the way, you are slowly beating around the bush. A Jill Cantwell was what we used to call, when I was a boy, a degenerate. We've got enough on Cantwell's public life to defeat him, not going to his private This was the first American movie to use the word homosexual. Or did he have that indiscretion? Vidal gets a lot of memorable dialogue zingers throughout and must have relished adding a pestering zealot character obviously modeled on his longtime nemesis William F. Buckley. The supporting cast is top-notch. Anne Southern is a pushy gossip columnist. Edie Adams is Robertson's social climbing wife. Margaret Layton is fond as neglected one. And Kevin McCarthy and Gene Reynolds are campaign managers, with the latter transformed in another improvement into Robertson's failed candidate brother. And you've got no business in this big league. <laughs> Apparently not. All in all, this is one of the best political movies of a sane era, unlike the one we're in today.